These are the frequently asked questions for Algebra 2 for Section 7.3, Day 1, starting with number 12. And we've been talking about logarithms. So remember, the logarithm base b of y equals x. Logarithm language is something that we're just getting used to. So what we have to do is write this in its exponential form so that it makes sense to us. So we have to say b to the x equals y. That's the piece that we have to be able to do. So that's the piece we know. We know how to raise things to powers. So I look at number 12, and they want me to take 49 equals 7 squared, and they want me to write that as a logarithm. So I think, OK, what they're telling me they want me to do is this. So how do I write that in logarithm form? Well, making my snail shell, it will be logarithm base 7. And as you make your snail shell, you have to raise that to the second power. And that will give you 49. So logarithm base 7 of 49 equals 2 is how we say that in logarithm language. And again, you could snail shell it when you get done and make sure that it says 7 squared equals 49 because that's what we want it to say. Now, the next one that I have up here is number 17. And 17 is 4 equals 1 half to the negative 2. Using that same process, I want to think, all right, so I have a base that needs to be raised to a power. And that base is 1 half. And the power it has to be raised to is negative 2. And then it has to come out to be 4. So again, if we snail shell this, it's going to say 1 half to the negative 2 equals 4, making that little snail shell as you come around. So 1 half to the negative 2 equals 4. Again, we're just making a little snail shell. All right, then, number 19. Number 19 says 10 to the negative 2 equals 0 0.01. This one will be easier to understand what's going on if we write 10 to the negative 2 equals 1 one hundredth. It makes more sense to see what we're doing here. So this is logarithm. And our base is 10. We want to raise that to the negative 2 power. And when we do that, we want to get 1 one hundredth, which in this case we uh, put back in that decimal form because that's what they gave us. But when you're thinking about this, it makes more sense to say, OK, yep, 10 to the negative 2 really is 1 over 10 squared, which is 1 one hundredth. So one of the things that, that will happen as you go through these is you'll see that they try to confuse you with different ways of thinking. And one of those different ways of thinking is with decimals. And that's because we tend not to do a lot of thinking in decimals unless it deals with money. So again, snail shell, 10 to the negative second equals 1 one hundredth. The next page says evaluate each logarithm. So we want to know. What is that? You know, what number does that represent? And in order to do that, what we have to do is say, we don't know. It equals something. You know, we don't know what it equals. And then snail shell it. So 4 to the x equals 2. And then think, OK, what power can you raise 4 to that would give you a 2? All right, well, what we have to do here is think, OK, it's getting smaller. So what's a power that would make that smaller? And hopefully, you say to yourself, wait a minute, the square root of 4 gives me 2. So if it's the square root, what is that as a power? Well, that's the 1 half power. So in this case, x is going to equal 1 half. Now let's just say you don't notice that. And instead, you say, all right, you know what I know about 4? I know it's 2 squared. So let's see. If I follow the, the orders of operations here, I'm going to deal with these powers. And dealing with those powers means raising a power to a power, which is multiplying. So 2 to the 2x equals 2. And I realize, well, that's really 2 to the first. So if this is going to be true, then 2x has to equal 1. That's the only way this is going to be true. So we'll divide both sides by 2. 
and get x equals 1 half. So again, two ways to think through this process and see what you get. Then number 23. 23 says logarithm base 4 of 8. Again, we want to set that equal to x. And that giving us, using the snail shell, will give us 4 to the x equals 8. Now, that's not something, you know, we normally think, okay, 4 to the something equals 8. You know, like 2 to the third we know is 8. So we start thinking that way and go, wait a minute. I better use that base of 2. So 4 is 2 squared, and 8 is 2 to the third. And following the order of operations, power to power means multiply. And of course, since the base of 2 is already the same, 2x would have to equal 3. Divide both sides by 2, and we get 3 halves. So 4 to the 3 halves equals 8. Now let's go through that and make sure that makes sense. Remember, the bottom number in our fraction is always the index. So that's really saying the square root of 4 cubed equals 8. Well, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 cubed is definitely 8. So that makes perfect sense with what we know about powers. So again, the whole process is changing this, translating this into a language that we know, which is going to be the power language. Number 26, logarithm base 5 of negative 25. All right, set it equal to x. Snail shell, 5 to the x equals negative 25. All right, so raise 5 to some power, and magically it becomes a negative 25. There's no way to do that. We can't raise it to a power and somehow make it negative. You know, this, this is not solid math here. So this is not possible. And when things are not possible, as we've talked about um, before, when we're trying to divide by 0, they're called undefined. We cannot do that. Therefore, it is undefined. Number 30. Logarithm of 10,000. All right. Set it equal to x. Problem. No base. Not a problem. Because this is the common logarithm. And remember, common logarithm is logarithm base 10. Our number system is base 10. Um, we go from 1 in the counting numbers up to 10, and then we really start repeating. It's 10 plus 1, 10 plus 2, 10 plus 3. So in this case, when we snail shell, we get 10 to the x equals 10,000. Well, the power that we raise this to has to match the number of zeros that we're going to have here. So that's going to be 10 to the fourth power. That would give us 10,000. Next up, we have the word problem. So the word problem is just like the one that we did in, in class today, um, and it deals with uh, using the logarithms to compare different earthquakes. In 1812, an earthquake of magnitude 7.9 shook New Madrid, Missouri. Compare the intensity level of that earthquake to the intensity level of each earthquake below. So this was the logarithm of intensity 1 divided by intensity 2 equals moment magnitude 1 minus moment magnitude of 2. So we just have to figure out where everything goes and then we're going to snail shell. So in 32 it says the original was 7.9. So we figure out, hey, that says that's the magnitude. So that was 7.9. This lined up a little there. And then we take a look at the problem that they gave us, and we realize, OK, now they're talking about 7.7. .7. So those moment magnitudes are 7.9 and 7.7. .7, and that is the logarithm of the ratio of the intensities. 
So it says compare the intensity level. If we compare the intensity level, what we really want to see is what is this ratio right here? How does the first intensity compare to the second intensity? To do that, we need a base. So we're going to write this as logarithm base 10 because that is the common logarithm. And then 7.9 minus 7.7 .7 is 0 0.2. And now that we have this all compact, where it says logarithm base b of x equals y, we can go ahead and snail shell this. So this will be 10 to the 0 0.2 equals the intensity of the first earthquake compared to the intensity of the second earthquake. So then we just need to figure out what 10 to the point 2 is, and that's 1.58489, so we'll go with 1.58. If they don't specify you know, what uh, we want for a decimal, then that's what we do. So the earthquake in Missouri was about 1.58 times more intense than the one that they had us investigate in this problem, which was San Francisco, California. So 1.58 times as much. Then number 86 says Dan will begin advertising his video production business online using a pay-per-click method, which charges $30 as an initial fee plus a fixed amount each time the ad is clicked. Dan estimates that with the cost of eight cents per click, his ad will be clicked about 150 times each day. Which expression represents Dan's total estimated cost of advertising in dollars after X days? All right, so we have $30 as an initial fee. You just flat out pay that. That has nothing to do with the days. Plus, what happens here is that it's eight cents per click, and he expects about 150 clicks per day. So, eight cents per click at 150 clicks per day. Per day means we're going to have to slap a little x back there because we don't know how many days. So, we need 0 0.08 times 150, and that comes out to 12. So this one, there's kind of a, a, a baiting going on here with uh, F. You know, they want us to think, hey, that, that $30 is going to be charged as, as part of this each day, then, you know, times the 150 per day. But it's not, because the $30 is just a one-time initial fee. So this is the I. Number 88 says, what's the expression the cubed root of? And then we have the quantity, the square root of a to the seventh, written as a variable raised to a single rational exponent. That means is one fraction power. Now, with parentheses, you always start at the innermost parentheses and work your way out. So I have a square root of a, and that's the same thing as a to the one half. So now I have a to the one half to the seventh power. And as I continue to work my way out, I realize, well, cubed root is to the one-third power. And now I have a power to a power to a power. And whenever you raise a power to a power, you have to multiply the exponents. Now what you might want to do is go ahead and put a 1 under that, because when you're working with fractions, it's always easier to have everything be a fraction. And then you take top times top times top, so numerator times numerator times numerator, and you get 7. And denominator times denominator times denominator, a to the 7 6. And there's our answer. So really, they were just asking us to put that in um, the fraction power form. So we realize it, definitely this is going to work with what we're doing as we speak about logarithms. And that will do it.